Welcome to the second screencast tutorial on how to use MorphoJ for uh, simple uh, analysis of geometric morphometric data. So we'll continue on with using this uh, data set uh, from uh, Chris Klingenberg's group using different species of Drosophila, both males and females, to examine how sexual dimorphism, that is the size and shape of the wings, varies uh, across different species. So the last thing we did was after importing the data and creating the project, we um, created our classifiers for sex and species. Uh, and again, we can double check that everything is in order by looking at the classifiers here, species, sex, and individual. Uh, we don't need to make any changes, but it's always worth going through this and taking a look, making sure everything makes sense with these, the different species, male and female, uh, make sure there's no extra characters. So what we'll do next is we're going to do a new Procrustes fit. So this will provide a Procrustes superimposition of the data. And we start that by just going new Procrustes fits. Now that you open this and it provides a couple of choices. One, we can align everything with the first specimen. Um, this is generally uh, done if for some reason that that first specimen may be some special configuration or um, some uh, mean mean configuration for a particular individual. But in general, there's uh, if you're just starting out, there's no need to do that. In general, we're going to align by principal axes. Basically, we're going to be computing averages uh, iteratively. So we will go through first by starting with the first specimen, compute, compute the superimposition and the minimization, then go ahead, calculate a mean, repeat this process multiple times until it essentially converges. Um, you can also align using specific landmarks, which in general we don't recommend and that will be discussed in, in class. So we'll just leave this as the align by principal axis, perform Procrustes fit. You can then look at the graphics and so what this is showing you is because we haven't yet done uh, anything to sort of make the wing look easier to look at. Um, these are just the 15 landmarks and each dot here represents a particular uh, individual uh, and you can see the spread. In fact, coming thinking back to the first tutorial, we were looking at potential outliers. Here's a whole bunch of observations for that, that landmark, which we were potentially concerned that there may have been swapping of landmarks. But here it looks like that's just actual biological variation. You also get some information here from the reports. It's just telling you um, something about the Procrustes fit. Um, generally speaking, this is a good place to look for errors. Uh, if there are any reported it's essentially just a log, um, but importantly it tells you Procrustes fit successful and results added to the data set. So if we actually go to the results, it'll tell you uh, that here is in fact for the Procrustes fit. This now gives you the new average configuration for each of the landmarks. So you can consider this just sort of the mean effectively. Uh, and it gives you some estimate of the amount of variance among, among the specimens. Um, and it also tells you that it's now generated some new data sets, and we'll look at those later. So in addition to the raw data, we now have centroid size, which is a measure of the size of the wing, essentially, uh, and Procrustes coordinates, and we'll come back to how to use that uh, in a later tutorial. Um, and you also see the data set contains all of the observations. So we didn't lose any observations. Uh, we have all 866 used. Okay. So if we go back to the project tree, you don't see anything new in this particular case. Um, we will shortly. Um, the other thing I would like to show you for this tutorial is um, how to do a number of things to help with visualizations. So the first is we can uh, import what's called an outline file. And this is not something where you're, it's not actual like semi landmarks or anything. This is not actual information about variation in the wing. This is just something to help provide a visualization um, for the shape of the wing. Now, uh, for other uh, organisms, you'd have to make your own outline file. And if, in fact, if you go to uh, Chris Klingenberg's, oops, that's, that was not supposed to happen. There we go. If you go back here to MorphoJ uh, in the user guide, um, it'll actually tell you how to, if you go to import outline file, actually discusses down here how you would generate uh, it. But thankfully, and again, part of the reason we're using this example, is they provide an example file here of, of one of these outline files that happens to be for the 15 landmark data for the wing. 
So we're actually just going to use that. Uh, so you can actually uh, right click this and save this link as a data frame, whatever it'll be saved as. I've already done that. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to file import outline file. Open that up. And that's the fly wing drawing coordinates in this case, and just go open. And so that's now created an outline, outline file that we'll be able to use in visualizations later on. Um, I'm not sure if you're able to do it here. It doesn't look like this, that you're able to, to do it just for this Procusti superimposition. The other thing that you can do, which is perhaps simpler for most, most um, uh, data sets, that different from, from here is to create or edit a wireframe. And this is just going to create, uh, sorry, let's click back on the Drosophila species sexual dimorphism. It can't be on the outline. It needs the data. So you're going to create or edit wireframe. And this opens up a window which has the 15 landmarks that we have here. Now we have to know how to attach these. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, in this case, go to their original paper. The This is the uh, evolution of sexual dimorphism of wing shape in Drosophila melanogaster subgroup, um, and I'll provide the links to these uh, already available on Desire to Learn, um, but you can also uh, just uh, copy and paste them or, uh, or uh, write them down and copy them or Google it. Evolution of sexual dimorphism of wing shape in Drosophila should bring this paper up. And thankfully, the first figure here, and I'm just going to click on that figure has a picture of the landmarks that are used. And so we can see how they're connected. So for instance, landmark 12 and 13, we could draw a line to. These two are physically connected to each other. So here what we would do is we'd go landmark 12, scroll down to landmark 12, landmark 13, link landmarks, do that. And that's now collected this point and this point right here. Um, similarly, I can keep going and go, say, landmarks 13 and 14. Link landmarks. And so on. So I'm going to pause the video so I can complete this, but you can do this on your own. So we've now, uh, I've now finished uh, the um, wire, wireframe here. And again, like with the outline, this doesn't contain any information. These lines don't mean, mean anything in the sense of there's no information from each specimen about these lines. These are simple just to provide a um, representation of the wing. And so from here, we can press accept uh, again. And we won't see anything new here if we go to this, but you will see a new wireframe that's written. Uh, in our next tutorial, we'll see actually how we're going to use these.